Good morning, everyone. This is John here for MTG Nexus with some Sultai Delirium in Pioneer, as voted for our user by our subscribers on the YouTube channel, as opposed to Bant Spirits or Demir Inverter. As a friendly reminder, if you like what you're seeing on the channel, please consider subscribing, giving us a thumbs up, leaving a constructive comment down below. This will be the Pioneer deck that we work on throughout the month of April. So one thing I've noticed over the last like several weeks, and I don't know if it's just the fallout of the players tour or whatever, but Pioneer has definitely fallen off in favor of Modern in terms of popularity currently. Well, it's kind of funny how cyclical Magic is between like Standard, uh, Pioneer, Modern, etc. Um, Historic's kind of somewhere mm, underneath of it all being in a digital only format. Uh, but uh, Pioneer definitely, I think, is less popular than Modern at the moment. I don't know if it's because people don't really wanted the Inverter and Breach decks to get banned or what was going on, but nevertheless, I do want to continue covering, doing some Pioneer coverage, and we are going to be starting out with a Reduke list that isn't a Jun deck. Um, this was a list that he recently did well with in either, I think it was one of the, the Pioneer preliminary this past weekend. So I figure that's a good jumping off point for an archetype, but the first time I played it, um, wasn't a big fan, but this is, this is a little bit more concise than that one. That deck had a lot of ones and two ofs. Um, let's see if I still have it floating around. Um, yeah, it was this list. It had like uh, Brain Maggot and Scavenging Ooze and Corsair of Crufix and like just all kinds of one ofs. And this deck just felt like really loose and very um, unfocused. Um, whereas this list feels a lot cleaner, has a lot better idea of what it's trying to do with like Jaces and Uros and Trackers and Murderous Riders, etc. Because basically what the deck is trying to do is it's trying to leverage things like Seder Wayfinder and Grizzly Salvage to fill your graveyard to trigger things like Traverse the Wall to be able to go find whatever various creatures you need. Um, and then you're kind of trying to leverage some card advantage with things like Uro, Tireless Tracker, and Atrus, eventually kind of just killing your opponent with Uro or some other combination of small creature beats. And then Ashiok Nightmare Muse is kind of a, um, addition that's kind of popped up to fight a lot of different things in the format, whether it be Mono White Devotion and their, uh, Gideon's Interventions or etc. Uh, to that end, you also have a couple copies of Abrupt Decay and some Fatal Pushes to supplement your Thought Seizes to disrupt your opponent. Uh, Murderous Rider, obviously a pretty good kill spell in addition to being a 2-3 body on the back end. And then E to Extinction is kind of their chosen um, way to deal with creatures and planeswalkers. Uh, this is extremely notable, especially for dealing with things like Heliod when it turns into a creature, which otherwise this archetype can kind of struggle with a little bit. Um... Beyond that, you are kind of graveyard dependent, so you need to be mindful, especially in the post-board games, of things like Rest in Peace and such. Uh, this is probably one of the decks that might be the softest to graveyard hate, whereas, like, Demir Inverter can just go shrug, combo in one turn. This deck, a lot of its interactions and stuff are shut off if the graveyard is no longer able. Uh, beyond that, 23 lands, along with the three traverses, you've got to be mindful when you're sideboarding. Um, especially if you're considering boarding out some of your traverses to be mindful of your cur mana curve otherwise even with the wayfinders and the salvages it can be hard to hit your land drops sideboard a um, couple different things of note here is three copies of damping sphere obviously uh, Reed is still very much respecting card uh, lotus breach decks two copies of duress to supplement your discard against the mid-range and control decks as well as some of the various combo decks especially lotus breach uh, three copies of Mystical Dispute, pretty solid against anything blue. So Spirits, um, the Mirror Match, uh, Inverter, etc. Unravel the Aether, kind of the chosen uh, removal spell against Heliod in the post-board games. Noxious Grasp obviously has a lot of targets in the format, whether it be Mono White Devotion, uh, any of the Gruel decks floating around, etc. A lot of things this can hit. Um, also comes in a pinch against uh, Mono White uh, Devotion to be able to kill their planeswalkers in addition to your murderous riders. Tamiyo, when you get in some grindier games that you're maybe not afraid of, they're bringing in graveyard hate. Two more copies of Abrupt Decay. Um, one card I could definitely see being in the list is uh, 
moving forward as we work on this archetype this month is something like Assassin's Trophy. Like Abrupt Decay is a great card, don't get me wrong, and I don't have enough um, recent experience with the Pioneer format to know if it's just the best removal spell, but I feel like you want some type of answer like uh, Assassin's Trophy to some of the higher end threats in some of these decks. But I can understand not wanting to give your opponent a land all the same. And then recall the promised end when you're kind of getting in a good mid-range slugfest. It's nice to have something that can go over the top in some of these instances. That said, let's hop into Elite. So, sorry the stream got delayed this morning. Um, I just needed to get more sleep, quite honestly. Um, I didn't sleep particularly well yesterday, so it was kind of a necessary evil to get a little bit more sleep tonight. So... But I have until roughly 10.45 this morning to stream, so hopefully we'll get through at least most of the league this morning. Downside of starting later is it's a little bit harder to get an audience here on Twitch once some of the big boys and girls get going, so... On the play, which is nice. Um, is this game keepable? And I guess. I mean, we have Jace, we have Traverse to get the first black source. I think I'm going to keep, but this hand is certainly. Uh, I'm going to shock in so we can cast Jace and still Traverse this turn. Um, that way we can grab the swamp. Like we're up against my white devotion right off the bat. Um, from what I have been told, this is not a good matchup, so I guess we'll find out one way or the other. Fabled Passage, huh? So, unfortunately, we really can't cast anything else this turn, so I think we just play Fabled Passage and pass. We have no other black source to fetch, which kind of sucks. Is that correct? There's only one swamp in this list? That's correct. There's only one swamp in this list. Okay. having a fairly aggressive draw overall. Sure. Not so much worried about the emblem per se. We are really falling behind on board. Dewey Pitcher is an interesting question. I really feel like we want the fifth land, but at the same time... Can't really pitch Fatal Push here. We just pitch. Look at the deck overall. Yeah, I need, do need double blue at some point, so. I guess we pitch Forest, which kind of sucks. I 
did pitch two lands, which does suck, and we can't necessarily cast Ashiok next turn, but... Sure. We'll just let Jace take a hit here in the face. Sure. Hmm. Walking list of Jay's Fatal Passage Blooming Marsh. We have to take Blue and Marsh. That's rough. Yep. yep. Forces our hand to do it now. Because otherwise, we just get got by the uh, second chapter of El Seth Conquer's death. No wonder why people say this is a miserable matchup. What game plan are we even working towards right now? I think we're just too far behind this game. Alright, so sideboarding against them. Obviously want Noxious Grasp. Definitely want at least one Unraveled Aether. Possibly two. Um, um, 
So Emrakul would be tempting, except you know they're bringing in Rest in Peace, and what does Emrakul really do against what they're trying to do? Is it just, like, bringing these four and... Like, Duress is fine, but what does it really accomplish? They have a couple of Planeswalkers. How much, exactly how much of their deck is creatures as opposed to non-creatures? I mean, they have really good non-creature hits, but the vast majority of their deck is creatures, so really... Eh, I don't know about bringing in Duress against them. So I probably want these four... Uh, go down... What? An Uro... A... Let's take a look at the curve now. Cedar Wayfinder, Traverse, basically trying to trim a little bit on the graveyard end of things. Does Blista really kill much in this matchup? Mm, not particularly, I think we can afford to board out Blista. Just doesn't feel like it kills enough of their stuff consistently. It seems fine, it doesn't feel particularly reliant on the graveyard, and we have a couple of value engines. We will eventually find removal spells with this hand. Hopefully they don't have like too many baffling ends or whatever, so. Question is, what land do we lean on? Probably... Breeding Pool, maybe? I guess if they spend their turn baffling ending us, they're not advancing their board, so maybe in some ways that's a positive. I think if they answer Jace, we're not going to play a naked tireless tracker here, so. Yep. Cedar Wayfinder is pretty nice here. I mean, it's nice ish. Like, if they follow up with, like, a rest in peace, it's like, okay, I got a 1-1 one, one and a land out of the deal, so. Even at worst, it's, like, not terrible. Okay, no land, just a bunch of stuff going to the graveyard. Uh, two different card types. Oh, let's make sure we play our land first. And on the way, orchid, sure. Which means they get to get house on land drops. No blocks. <laughs> sure. So 
I think our goal here is to probably cast Atrus. <coughs> Hopefully we hit like a fatal push or a um Thought sees maybe. Actually, I have one each in the bin right now, so. Leave a black source open here. Rider, Seder Wayfinder versus an unknown. I think I'm taking this pile. Put abrupt decay in the graveyard. Interesting. I'm going to chump blocking with Wayfinder this turn. I don't think so. I could just be dead to Ballista here. Four mana, Ballista, sure. Alright, well, I mean, that's the... This could take, I suppose. <coughs> <coughs> no respect for a fatal push. Alright. Fair enough. From what I have heard, now I don't have enough experience with either archetype, is that that's a very bad matchup for Sultai. So, it wouldn't surprise me. Um... Morning, Dreadbore. How are you? So what about this format blows? I think it's... I, I've been listening to a couple different podcasts about Pioneer, um, Midweek, MTG, and Pine, uh, Pioneer Pod... Uh, Ross Merriam and Tan Grace's thing. I don't think the format sucks. I think it's been solved. Ah, uh, there's a ton of good answers. They're just limited. It, but that's been the philosophy in Magic the last couple years, is to print better threats and more... Um... more narrow answers. See, like, one thing I would look at Reed's list. Now, I'm not questioning Reed and his choices of the deck list, because obviously he's probably played a lot more Sultai Delirium than I have. But I'm kind of of the question, like, do you want uh, some number of trophies? And, and a card I could definitely see them printing into the format at some point. This hand's pretty decent. Um, a card I could see them printing into the format at some point is uh, Maelstrom Pulse. They did it with Historic. So I wonder if at some point they're not tempted to just 
like print it into Pioneer, directly into Pioneer with like a Pioneer Masters or something. Mirror match? Possibly. I think we want to hold Fable Passage for Tireless Tracker if we can manage it. Okay. Bills look the mirror match. Yeah, it definitely feels like the mirror match. <laughs> I swear there's like a programming thing that just says okay you thought see something let's let's just go ahead and <clears throat> I think quench is the closest you're gonna get and honestly there technically is a two-man counter spell in the format between Quench and Silumgar Scorn, so I agree, but there is nevertheless a two-man counterspell in the format. Hey, that's a pretty good one this turn, right? Um, eventually they want to put Pioneer on, uh, whatchamacallit, so, their, their stated goal was eventually they want to put Pioneer on, the dragons aren't horribly unplayable, um, Ojitai and Sulngar have both seen play in the format. Limited play, albeit, but they've both seen play. Sure. Oh, it's echoing, echoing Jack. Oh, I hate one of those. I still haven't been able to figure out why that echo is like that. Is it still echoing so much? Let's see if they respond with a fatal push. Doesn't seem like they have one. We're gonna get the clue either way, so may as well just get it off the board now. No, I only have one. Um, the one thing that could be happening, and I haven't figured out how to stop it, is there is an onboard microphone on the laptop itself that like <coughs> still seems to pick up sound sometimes even when I mute the uh, the microphone that it's supposed to pick up which is the uh, ice ball here sure Questioning what I'm supposed to be doing here. Uh, 
I guess I'm supposed to get back uh, Uro this turn. So there's four card types. Problem is, if I get back Uro here. I'm dredging away my entire graveyard. I think I just like Jace, Wayfinder. I think I'm more likely to need black mana after a Wayfinder here, so. I was like, <clears throat> so I would take shock in here. Six. Are they hoping to hit an Uro here? And they missed. <laughs> Jack, you're you're wasting your breath. You're you're talking about a diehard blue white control enthusiast over there, so Accepting this trade here. My question is one, two, three, four, five. So do I salvage risk hitting a land drop? I think that's what I'm supposed to do this turn. And I miss. So grab another Jace. I guess we'll just bring back an Uro this turn. It's kind of hoping to hit a land drop to bring back a salvage push meter finder. So as much as you want to cry about blue Space Marine, two of the four best decks in the format have blue in them, Demir Inverter and Salt Eye Delirium. So cry all you want, but blue is a big part of the format. It's a support co color, and bl blue's power is like Jason's Prodigy, Dig Through Time, etc. Gonna be one grindy game. <coughs> the thing is, I don't think Wizards wants it to be. Are you kidding me? All right, we're about to lose Ashiok. I knew I should have played Ashiok at some point here. <laughs> mm. They didn't take Ashiok. They took Traverse. Okay. 
That's kind of ballsy. Start by casting Atrus. I tell you what, we'll give you counter spells, good counter spells in Pioneer, but everybody gets access to Cavern of Souls. Rider here, I'm guessing. Shadow of the Sky is the closest you're going to get to Wrath of God. <laughs> Bright Green gets Birthing Pod. Oh. Jack, you're getting into some arguments with uh, Space Marine like Foz used to. That's a little rough. Them having the one of hostage shaker here is pretty uh top pile percent face up. Yeah, let's do these ones. <coughs> I have a feeling we're gonna take the hostage shaker here. Problem is, I'm really running out of answers. Or is this an Uro or is this a hostage shaker? Feels like this is an Uro. This is a pretty good rip here. <coughs> I 
Riders yet. That's kind of scary. Problem with this is they're going to be able to Just get rid of the Seder way you found there, correct? Yep. Oh no, Menace on Interest just gets to kill it straight up. <clears throat> that was. This is game number one, isn't it? <laughs> oh dear. I think glimpse would be a bit too much. <laughs> Into extinction. what's in your hand at this point. Traverse and Veil Bush. Take, Take Traverse. Cast a Jace. Cast a Murderous Rider. Let's see. Go. Unplayable in what format? Pioneer or modern? with a blister on top. Okay, no I am left to fetch. Crack a clue. Attacking. Took 
extension to zero. Just go ahead and cast this hero. I want to keep in the one that's in play. Oop. That has an Earl on top of their library. And very large walking blist on hand, which is annoying. Yeah, Jack, I don't know what's causing the echoing. It's really annoying to me. Perhaps they're playing out the ballista on two here. Jace, Jace, fail push. <clears throat> Feels like this, uh, Walking Blist is going to be taking over this game with that much mana in play. Wow. Really? May come down to who actually decks first. Jace's at least. Yeah, Ashiok on top, that's rough.
for two, three. There's a Jace. So, I think we start by leaving. Pitch the land. Problem is, no matter what we do here, we can't kill <clears throat> Ashiok. So, like, I think this game is probably over. Let's go ahead and fatal push the token here. I think we're just going to lose on the basis of decking. See what they go grab here. Okay. This point, I'm just bleeding them for time. Sure. <laughs> have another Murderous Rider on top, sure.
keeping in mind this is game one. Like, legitimately, this is game one. I did learn an important lesson in this game. You can't win via the tempo plan. <laughs> sure, Swift End is gone. I don't think my opponent has realized at this point that I have given up on winning this game. They're just like burning clock for no reason whatsoever. Like legitimately they should attack with this, activate Rivalate, and pass turn. They shouldn't be taking all these game actions. Turn. Why are you taking game actions? Why? This is still game one. And my opponent is just like destroying their own clock. Indeed, game number one. Yay! All right, so definitely want Emrakul. Probably want Tamio. I think Mystical Dispute's too cheeky. I think Dress is a non-starter. Um, could the Brilliant Number Up Decays? <laughs> I understand, like, getting, getting all the value, value but, but at the same time, the, the clock is the enemy. enemy. At this, this point, I am not, not their enemy. The clock is their enemy. Because I'm not, I'm clearly not winning two games in 11 minutes. <clears throat> so, I guess we're running over to K's. Walking Ballista once again feels like kind of a nonsensical card here. <sighs> the question becomes, like, like what cards <coughs> are supposed to get awarded out in the matchup? Is it just some number of thought seeds and fatal pushes? Like maybe a fatal push and a thought seeds or two? Like, obviously there's a lot of awesome cards in the matchup, but at the same time... Um, I just can't help it. Well, yeah, sounds fun. And they just like continue to bleed time. Okay. The feeling we're going to be playing very quickly here.
take a I'm taking here a breeding pool or tomb. Tomb. I got a couple of rows. They brought in mystical. This would be interesting. Sure. Guessing your name Uro. It's hazarding, I guess. Amazing, much more quickly they're playing now that they realize that the strategy is to time them out. It's amazing how much more quickly they're playing. Problem is, I think we're just going to lose because they have access to two euros. How much? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're still a little bit of a ways off. I'm just going to eat to extinction this. No, I would not like to put that in the graveyard. It was not. <clears throat> um, it's also a whole lot harder to trigger. So they would have been able to take her take away Emrakul there, even if we had cast it, so The nice thing is that we have uh, tireless tracker on top, so I 
I'm not gonna crack a clue right now. It's not worth it. Yep, there's Jace. Whiff. Actually, let's uh, crack a glue first. Traverse, traverse, trophy. Super trophy, push the Jace. It's possible we're supposed to push the arrow there, but I think Jace is enough value that, no, we were supposed to push the arrow. That was a mistake on my part for playing too quickly. Now that our opponent has figured out actually how to play a game of magic quickly, it looks like that they're gonna win this match. All right, what can Tammy I'll get back here? I guess for now we get back abrupt decay. Wait until they go to combat. What was a big mistake? I want to get traverse, but we don't can't necessarily guarantee that we would survive. Yeah, that was definitely a mistake. Once again, though, we if we rip another Traverse or a uh, Emrakul, I think we're still in this game. All right, that's a thing. You seriously, I'm gonna say, do you seriously have a mystical dispute? All right, so they have their own Emrakul, which is mildly annoying.
traverse for probably nothing. Let's get to look at their library. Done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wow, we just enabled them to cast their own Emrakul next turn. Cool. Um, hmm. Sure. Are you going to trade? Why did what happen? I... I don't know. Honestly, couldn't, couldn't tell, tell you. you. So this, this hand has no blue mana. Can I risk keeping a hand with no blue mana and only an abrupt decay as a castable card? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve blue sources plus three traverse. I think the fact that they were in a hurry to get things done um, had something to do with it. They were... Their, their way they were going to die was the clock, so... And the only reason they were able to leverage things quite like that was the fact that uh, they... Um, I think I really have to cast... State of Wayfinder here. It's up against Esper Control, it looks like. And Blue Source, sure. I have a feeling this is going to be a slog, so. <coughs> That's on. Probably take a Rupt K here. Of course they do. Gives away information, but this at least allows us to. How oh, much war dog are you doing? Play that one. It's possible I should have abrupt decayed the search for his canta, but 
They're, they have a very weird build of Esper. I'm not sure I would build Esper with Concealed Courtyard. But, you know. I'm not even sure I'd build Esper with Search for Kanza. So I can resolve, this is kind of a rough spot. I think I'm supposed to resolve, uh, whatchamacallit here, well I can, but. Yeah, so far I've lost to Mono White Devotion and one heck of a grindy Mirror match. Sure. They're just tapping out like it's nothing. Oh, yeah. Turn. Really was hoping to draw an abrupt K before this flips, but appears they're an enchantment based control deck. So it'd be a surprise if they have like. They may not even have counter spells in their deck, just looking at the setup. Yeah, it looks like they're just like flat out tap out control here. Doesn't feel like I want to bring back Euro in the face of what's likely an end of turn supreme verdict. Yep. Activating at main phase. Interesting. Dot erasure. Not a whole lot going on in my hand right now. Oh, they get to do it during my draw step. Yay. Again, most of what's going on is already kind of face up. Thought sees. Okay. It's kind of nice at least. We only have one blue source right now, huh? Blue, blue, green, green. Uro, do the Uro thing. So it's a fairy and one unknown. You have to replay. Oh, hero's downfall. That's unfortunate. 
Yep, yep, yep. game there's my entire graveyard I might listen to them, but I honestly don't know their music, so it's kind of like, eh. Bring back Elspeth. Push, push. Question is, what am I killing? I guess I'm killing uh, Elspeth again. Or do I just ignore Elspeth? No, I can't ignore Elspeth here, right? Kill Elspeth, kill them. That was a nice rip. To abrupt decay, this guy. Did you rip a separate verdict? It's a fairy time raveler. Okay. this board. Oh, it is? Hmm. Don't tell me you found a supreme verdict. Elspeth conquers death. Um, murderous rider, our own dude. What what what? Traverse. Gonna just traverse for walking blist and in the game. Walking blist is still in my deck, right? It is not. Well then, um, hmm. That is most unfortunate. I guess we'll just grab a backup murderous rider then. Go 
because that would have uh, certainly ended the game on the spot. It's possible I was supposed to grab Tireless Tracker there just to have a way to grind. of Kaya, yeah that might keep them alive. They are digging really hard for a verdict. Heroes downfall. Oath of Kaya. Actually should have fatal push there. Fortunately, this gets to happen during our main phase. Bring back to fairy. That's annoying. To fairy hero of Dominaria, sure. Supposed to use the fatal, can't use the fatal push. Never mind. Let's start by thoughtseizing. Thoughtseize the thoughtseize. Cast swift hand on fairy hero dominaria. Cast. Murder Strider. Play arrow. To extinction. Kill your other ones, Walker. Sure, because why not? Get all the value. We'll set some champion, sure. I don't think we're reading that one, so moving on. Thing. 
that's, that's pretty, pretty good. good. This has been, been a uh, Kind, kind of a long grind fest this morning, so I'm taking a 20 seconds here to kind of like recollect my thoughts. I don't know how people can sit here and play these kind of grindy mid range decks all day and not like lose their bloody minds. Probably take out the fatal pushes. Probably want to rest. Probably want to little disputes. Noxious Grasp. An Abrupt Decay. At least one. Tamiyo and Emrakul. Um, probably bringing in Rest in Peace. I probably want to trim on stuff. Outside of Emrakul that relies on that. So Ballista can kind of answer Planeswalker sometimes, but I think between Abrupt Keys and Murderous Riders, we should have enough answers. I'm going to trim a Euro. Trim one or two Seder Wayfinders. We still need to be able to hit our land drops. Well, this is going to be the last match anyway so and I'm kind of a little bit pressed for time this morning I had maybe another half hour 45 minutes yes there's echo sometimes and I still can't figure out what the heck's causing it like it literally comes and goes and there's literally no explanation the only thing we've been able to mainly possibly figure is that the onboard microphone is trying to pick up at the same time the uh, snowball microphone is trying to pick it up. Sounds fun. I think I lead on Traverse here for a blue source. Not going to undress on one. There's nothing on one that I particularly care about. Duress. And his Oath of Kai and Elvis Reborn. Well, that's a spicy number there. Looks like they're just tap out Esper Control. Possible I was supposed to play the other Blooming Marsh last turn instead of uh, yeah I can't just play that and into the into a known Oath of Kaya here as much as I want to get Jace down it just doesn't make any sense here. The problem when you draw all answers against no threats from their side. It's probably a ghost. Like, do I just run this out there to get it out of the way? I don't think so. I think there are other in a targets that like like a tireless tracker or something that would be more tempting. Gonna run that out there. We know it's gonna get out the kayak at some point, so what 
What happened to your job at the lumber mill? Did the lumber mill get closed? Probably a boring ghost. Gee, thanks, Dreadboar. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, yeah, you could have, uh, I don't know, man, that's, that's a rough spot to be in. I've been playing around Mystical Dispute the whole time. Rather, this year. That's fine. <clears throat> sure. I think that most of us already knew that. Just hazarding, I guess. So do I play Ashiok here is the question mark. I don't think we're going to be able to tumble them out, but man, I am trying. <clears throat> Toast. 
a fairy. <laughs> Come on. Uh, and they still have just enough to fire up Shamling Vent to kill Ashiok. <laughs> Yeah, this is definitely entering the scoop phase. Played by our opponent, though. So if they rip a Thoughtseize effect, we're in some trouble here. Alright, that's... Yeah, that's enough. Oh... <sighs> I think my takeaway from this league is twofold. One, um, I can play John. Like, I, I've established now that I'm decent enough with the John uh, play patterns. I don't like generally don't like blue control. I generally don't like combos that are going to blow my head apart. Like, I don't know. There's not too many combo decks that are beyond my ability to grasp. Um, I've managed to pilot Amulet and some other stuff in the past, so I'm not... But I think this is the style of deck that um, is it's completely, completely miserable, miserable for me. me. Uh, I, I think, think the deck, deck is fine. I just, just don't think I am the pilot to do it. Um, <laughs> red spell is like one of people's faces. Uh, so I think, despite the results of the poll, um, I'm not going to put myself through a month of this. Uh, I just can't, in good conscience, pilot this deck well enough to do it justice. And, um... 
this deck is beyond the style of deck that I'm willing to play in a format like Pioneer right now. Um, I think Uro gives you a lot of card advantage, a lot of grind, but I think outside of Uro, there's a real problem with closing power in this deck. Um, you have a ton of card advantage, but does it really matter? Um, so, well, no, I, I'm not basing everything I'm saying just on the basis of the, of the Jun, of the Esper Control tap out mat matchup or anything like that. I'm just simply basing it on the basis of, um, I don't find the play pattern of this deck fun. Uh, like, I find the play pattern of, um, Five Color Niv to be fun. I find the play pattern of Inverter to be interesting. Um... Just for some reason, I don't enjoy the play pattern of this deck. Like, the mental burn it caused me was pretty real. And part of it's it's first thing in the morning. Part of it is just this is, like, actively the deck that I, style I try to avoid most of the time. Like, I find... Blue White or Esper Control or Jeskai Control in Modern to be far more simpler to pilot than what this deck is doing. Um, I think I'm either going to resort to Spirits or there's another deck that caught my eye. Um, yeah, I, I, like I'm just explaining that literally this is the style of deck that I cannot leverage well enough for it to be an enjoyable experience for anyone whether it be the audience or myself um i just can't so i think i'm either going to resort to spirits the rest of the month or one of the other decks that that caught my eye was this um pile it's another uro deck so like i enjoy playing uro in certain shells like decks like this are just fun to me like, legitimately, this deck is just, like, pile of stuff with some big payoffs. Um, but, yeah, I just, I can't, I can't get behind playing, uh, playing Salt Eye. I just, I just can't. <laughs> I try. This is the second time I've played it in... Um, no, I don't want to play another mid-range deck, Dreadbore. Like, I'm not saying, I just don't enjoy this archetype in Pioneer. Like, I think Spirits is much more my jam in, in a format like Pioneer. I think Pioneer can be much like Standard, much like, um, whatever format you name. I think I actively try to avoid the deck that's just attrition-based, 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 attrition-based. Like, Jund... I don't know how to describe it about Jund. Like, Jund is obviously an attrition deck. Yes, I can refer to you as Space Marine if you wish. I was just doing it as a courtesy to your screen name on here. Um... Like, I don't know what is the difference between Jund and this deck in terms of, like, why I enjoy Jund, but I don't enjoy the playstyles of this deck. Like, I, I don't... Like, maybe you guys can explain better than I can, but, like, I just don't enjoy the play pattern of this deck. So. Anywho. This deck, it's powerful, it's got its engines, it plays good cards, 
but it just requires a different mind to uh, play it. It's basically the TLDR. Um, <laughs> that's a control player saying, because this is a deck is a miserable pile of do-nothing. Fair enough. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> so I think for next week's Pioneer, I think we're going to go back to... Uh, Probably ban spirits, just because uh -huh. I just can't do this. <laughs> well, thank you guys for hanging out this morning. If you're new to the channel and you slog through this, please consider giving us a follow. If you're new new to the channel on YouTube, please consider subscribing. Um, I have War Dog, and I'll get to it eventually. But at this point, I want to play more established decks. At least when I'm dipping my toe into the Pioneer format. Because, to be honest, Pioneer doesn't do particularly well view numbers right now. At least on my channel. So I'm trying to stick to the established archetypes to try to find some type of toehold in the Pioneer um, market as far as views and stuff. Like, bouncing between all these decks just doesn't do me any favors in terms of growing the channel. So, I'm trying to... I think it's good. I've run into it once or twice. I don't know how good it is, but I think it's fun. But, uh... Yeah, I think I'm going to stick with Spirits the rest of the month. Just because... Not a fan. Tried it. Not a fan. <laughs> Apologies to everybody on YouTube who voted for this. Tried it. Not a fan. Anywho, I hope everybody has a great day. This has been John for MTG Nexus. I gotta go get ready for work, so yay. <laughs>